Welcome to our first video in our look at linear functions. We're going to start by looking at identifying slope of lines. We're going to define it first, and then we're going to look at several methods of finding it, depending on what you're starting with. Now, the first thing is, what is slope? Well, slope is also known as a rate of change. We're looking at measuring two specific items and comparing them to each other, making what's known as a ratio. In a line, our rate of change or our slope is always the same. No matter what points you choose, it will always be the same. Now we're going to look at, there are four types. These are called correlation. Now a correlation is simply, think of it as the direction that a slope goes. We have four main types. If you have a line, going from the bottom left to the top right, that is known as a positive. If you have a line which is going from the top left to the bottom right, that is known as a negative. If you have a line which is going directly across and horizontal to that x-axis, well, as I just said, that is called a horizontal. And then, of course, opposite of that, if you have a line which is exactly the same as the y-axis, that is a vertical. Those are your four correlations. Now, we're going to look at finding numbers which match those. Horizontal and vertical, you might remember from Algebra 1, having very specific numbers no matter what. But positives and negatives can change and depending on what the line looks like. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the variable that's involved in it. All slope is going to be represented by the variable m. m is our variable meaning slope. When we talk about slope-intercept equations, we will use an M. Now, we're going to start by looking at finding the slope from the picture. I have two graphs of lines. Now, there is a formula that we use for finding these. Our formula, I'm going to draw it in the middle here is known as rise over run. Now rise is always dealing with the y values. Run is always dealing with the x values. So let's look at this one on the left. There are two dots on there. Whenever you see dots already drawn on a line, use those dots. Now I'm going to switch to red. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at the dot on the left and I'm going to draw and I'm going to draw two triangles so that you can see that there are two ways to do this. But I'm going to start at that dot and I'm going to trace along the vertical axis all the way down. Then I'm going to go to the other dot and I'm going to trace along the horizontal all the way across towards where I drew my other line. Now I'm going to color in the boxes. Now notice they make a cross that sort of puts a corner. Now I'm going to draw in on my boxes here. So I'm going to have, I'm going to start right below that left hand dot. So I've got a box, a box, a box, a box, and a box. And then down here, I'm going to start right before this dot, a box, 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 box. That gives me the rise 
and the run. Rise always moves you up and down. Run moves you left and right. Rise moves you along the y-axis, run along the x-axis. So if I look at my boxes, I just have to count them. For the rise, I have one, two, three, four, five, and my run, I have four. So that means I have a slope of five over four. Now you always check to see if you can reduce your fraction. 5 over 4 does not reduce, but there's something else I have to look at. Remember back to the correlation. Look at this line and ask yourself, is it going in a positive, a negative, a horizontal, or a vertical correlation? Well, this one is going from top left to bottom right, which means it is a negative correlation. So that means I'm just going to drop a negative sign in with my fraction. So the m, the slope, is equal to negative 5 fourths. Now I said that there was another way to count. I'm going to show you that using green. I'm going to still start at the left. This time I'm going to draw across this way. And then I'm going to start at the other dot. Instead of drawing across, I'm going to draw vertical. Notice that's going to give me the run on top. Notice it's still 4. And the rise on the right-hand side, which notice is still 5. It still gets us to the same place. It does not matter which side. We are basically drawing a right triangle. So let's look at the other one. Now this one I'm only going to draw one case. I always like to start at the left dot and draw my vertical, my rise. That's personal. That's up to you. I'm going to start at this left dot and I'm going to draw my vertical. I'm going to go on the right dot and draw my horizontal. So when I color, I have two dots on the vertical. One, two, three, four, five, six dots on the horizontal. So that means that my slope is a fraction, a rise of two over a run of six. Notice it is going uphill. It is a positive correlation, so I don't need a sign. But 2 over 6 is not simplified. 2 over 6 simplifies to 1 third. So that is my slope, 1 third. Now the other situation you can see with, point, with graphs is what if you don't have the dots? Well, this is where you have to be very careful. In the background on a graph, you see grid lines, and those grid lines intersect at what are known as lattice points. Those are nice, neat, and easy to count. You can only look at lattice points. Nowhere else. Do not look in between lines. That will not work. So if I look at this one on the left, I have several dots that I can find. They're not always on the axis. I would check there, but these are other dots that you could use. They're all at nice intersections, even the one on the edge. You only need two of them. I'm going to pick these first two. I'm going to do my vertical from the left dot and my horizontal from the right dot. I'm not going to draw all. I'll draw all the way across. My rise is 2. My run is 1. So that means my slope has a rise of 2, a run of 1. The correlation is negative. Well, negative 2 over 1 just becomes negative 2. 
when I look at my other graph, I have a dot here. There's another dot down here. If you can't tell, then don't use that point. And these will always give you at least two. So I'm going to draw my rise. I'm going to draw my run. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then my run of one. So that does mean that my slope is a rise of seven over a run of one. It is a positive, so that means my answer is just seven. We usually don't care if you leave seven over one, but you're not normally going to see that. Now remember that there are some special cases. The special cases here, if you see a horizontal line. So here's my xy axis, here's a horizontal line. If you see that horizontal line, the slope is automatically zero, no matter what. No matter where it is, if it's horizontal, it's zero. If you see a vertical line, no matter where it is, if it is vertical, the slope is un defined, not unidentified, undefined. That just means that we can't give it a name. If you tried to count rise over run, it has a rise of some number, but the run would be zero. And if you remember carefully, you cannot divide by zero. The answer is undefined. So this slope is undefined. Now let's look at using finding the slope from ordered pairs. So this means you don't have the picture, but you know two dots that are on that line. Now we're going to look at just a couple of these. So if we have a formula for this, our formula here is simply, since we have rise, over run was our first formula. Rise is the y's. So ordered pairs are always in the form of an x followed by a y, and then a second x followed by a second y. Notice the subscripts mean first and second. So when we do rise over run, we're taking the difference between the y's. You tend to do second and first. It actually doesn't matter. And then the run is dealing with the same thing, but on the x's. It is very important that you don't get these upside down. And that is our formula for ordered pairs. And it's pretty easy to work with. So let me sort of separate the page up here. And first, let's look at this. If I know that a line crosses through 10, 15, and through 4, 11. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to label my x's. This is the first x. This is the second x. And then I'm going to label my y's. This is the first y. This is the second y. So when I draw this, I'm going to drop subtractions to begin with. There's always subtractions. I'm going to put my y's on top, so my second y is 11, my first y is 15, then my x's, my second x is 4, my first x is 10. Now I'm going to do the subtraction. So 11 minus 15 is negative 4, 4 minus 10 is negative 6, and then I'll reduce. Negative 4 divided by negative 6 is positive 2 thirds. And there's my slope. Let me drop it m equals in front. There's my slope. Let's look at this problem. If I have negative 9 and 10, 
negative 15, negative 10. So first, let me mark my x's. So there's my first x, my second x, and then here's my first y, my second y. So m equals, I'm going to drop my subtractions and start with my y's. My second y is negative 10. My first y is 10. Then my x's, my second x is negative 15. Now this is where you have to be careful. My second x, or my first x is negative 9. Notice I put parentheses. You don't want to lose a negative sign. Remember that this means right here, that's going to turn into a plus sign. So now when I subtract on top, I'm going to have negative 20. And on bottom, negative 15 plus 9 is negative 6. I simplify, and I get 10 over 3. Again, like we were talking about with the horizontal and vertical, if you see a zero on top, I'll put a little slash over so you know it's a zero on top, then the m equals zero. If you see a zero on bottom, then m equals undefined. That's that vertical line. Pay very close attention for those zeros. If you try to type in a vertical one into the cal into a calculator, it will give you an error message. If you type a horizontal one in, it will work it out. It'll be okay. But be very, very careful. Okay, now the last thing that we're going to look at is finding the slope when you have the equation. And this is all about getting y by itself. You need everything to be y equals. We will cover what a y equals equation means later. We're only looking for one thing from it right now. So that's the goal. So again, let me split the screen up. So let's say that I have y equals negative 3x plus 3. Now, you have to have a y and an x. First step, is y by itself? So always ask, is y by itself? That's the big question. If it is, like this problem, we're good. m equals negative 3. m touches the x. That's the other big rule. m touches the x is y by itself. Quote those. So that's our answer. It's right there. It doesn't mean it's first, it just, it has to touch the x. Now let's say that we have x minus 4y equals 4. Well, y is not by itself, so we're going to have to make it by itself. So I'm going to drop a 1, and we're going to do a little bit of equation solving. To move that x, and always move the x first, it's a positive x. So I'm going to subtract x, and I'm going to drop it in front. So negative 4y equals negative 1x plus 4. You cannot combine these together. Remember that. You can't combine. That is very important to remember. Now I need to divide by negative 4 to everything. So that gives me y equals, well, negative 1 divided by negative 4 is 1 fourth x, and 4 divided by negative 4 is negative 1. Now y is by itself, so m equals 1 fourth. 
right there touching the X. If you set it up right, it will always be first. Now again, there are the special cases. If you see X equals a number, so you do not see a Y, then M is undefined. If you see y equals a number, let me fix my n, then m equals 0. Those are our vertical and horizontal lines. Those are the special cases. They have only one variable. Everything else has an x and a y, which means it has a number slope, not undefined or 0. So this, remember, is just finding slope. It's just a quick basic of that. So remember, relook at this if you need it, and good luck on finding your slopes.